our baptism and the Lord's Supper expectations during the dispensation of grace. Get with me Ephesians 4, 5. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 5. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. So how many baptisms are proper during the dispensation of grace? One. Get 1 Corinthians 12, 13. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 13. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. Well, Ephesians 4 says there's one baptism. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 says it's a spiritual baptism, because for by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. Look at me at Romans 6, verse 3. Romans chapter 6 and verse 3. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into His death? None of that is baptism with water. So is there a place for water baptism today during the dispensation of grace? The scriptural answer is no. Now here's what's, I'll make one observation on that before we move on to the Lord's Supper. Here's what goes on in Christendom right now. There's debates over the method of water baptism. Pouring, sprinkling, full immersion. There's debates over the timing of it. Some baptize as infants. Some baptize as adults. There's disagreement over the formula that is pronounced when you water baptize someone. What words do you use to do that? And what happens is this. Christendom has all kinds of disagreements about water baptism. But what they really don't like is when you say, well, there is no water baptism for the body of Christ. Which is what Ephesians 4, 5, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and Romans 6, 3 clearly indicate. There's one baptism that has nothing to do with water. Get 1 Corinthians 11. The last thing we'll look at is whether or not the Lord's Supper is for today. And I won't give this a full treatment, but I'll, I'll just make this observation. We'll look at, in 1 Corinthians 11, at some verses here. Do these verses give you the sense of don't practice the Lord's Supper at all? Or do they give you the sense of there's a right way to observe it and a wrong way to observe it? So 1 Corinthians 11, verse 20. When ye come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. And some will say, well, see, it says don't eat the Lord's Supper. That's not what it says. Look at verse 21. For in eating, every one taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunken. In other words, the manner in which the Corinthians were observing the Lord's Supper was undignified and carnal and wrong. Now notice verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. When Paul says, I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, doesn't that sound like 1 Corinthians 15, where Paul says, for I delivered unto you that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again, and so on. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, this was revelation given to Paul, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. Verse 27. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Well, what verse 27 and 28 are saying, when it uses the word unworthily, it's talking about the manner in which they were taking the cup. Some people will say, well, what that's a reference to is, if you aren't living right, then you shouldn't participate in the Lord's Supper. 
So my question then is, if you're living in a way where you are worthy of the body and blood of the Lord, then raise your hand. I need to get to know you and I can learn from you. Because what, what human being can say, yes, my life is such a shining example that I am worthy of partaking of the Lord's Supper. Isn't the whole point of the Lord's Supper that you're not worthy? The whole point of the Lord's Supper is Christ died for your sins, right? It's a remembrance of his sacrifice. So when you read verse 27 and 28, it just seems to me obvious. What, what it's saying is, Corinthians, when you get together and some of you are drunk and then others don't have anything to eat, that, that is just an embarrassment right? It, 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 this is supposed to be an observance of the Lord's sacrifice, and you're acting like an idiot. So it seems to me the Lord's Supper is, is plainly for today, but be fully persuaded in your own mind.